We're finally back with a third episode of the Villarreal series. I've been on holiday for a week, so I've missed uploading for a little bit, but I am back. And today's episode, we've got to pack a lot into. Not only do we start off our Champions League run against Shakhtar, we also have, probably more importantly to you guys, a load of transfers that we did. We didn't really do too much in the last video. We finished off a bunch of deals, upgraded the squad in a few positions, and also sold a few players too. So there's a lot to catch up on. Let's run the intro and get right into it. Hi everyone, Jake here, and we are back with another episode of Villarreal to Victory, where we're trying to win the Champions League with Villarreal. I've mentioned before, but we had a few people say that this was going to be super easy. It's not really proved that way so far. We've actually haven't played that many games to be able to judge it, and each game has been kind of circumstantial. But we haven't won all our games. We won our first two, looked really good, and then actually lost our most recent games. But we do have a bunch of transfers to get into our first Champions League match. It should be a pretty exciting episode. As I mentioned, I've been on holiday in the US for a week, so I haven't recorded. I'm also going to be realising what's happened in the save since last time I played before the holiday. At the same time you guys are, I've kind of forgot what was going on, but we'll get right into it in a few seconds. Firstly, I'd like to ask you if you could hit the like button. I'd greatly appreciate it. It would really help in supporting the series and keep it going strong because you guys have supported it very well so far. The more likes, the more views we get early on, the better this series will do as a whole. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already as we push towards 8 thousand subscribers we're actually nearly halfway there between 7,000 and 8,000 which is crazy so thank you guys for that drop a comment down below about whatever you like if you want it to be about transfer recommendations that would also be great because last video you guys recommended a few players and I actually scouted a few and picked a couple up so with that all being said I think it's about time we get into the video and we'll start off with our form where you saw us in the first game of the season I believe um, against Espanyol. Yes, you did. You might recognize that the Espanyol match actually has a different result to what we had in the video. I think in the video we won 4-2, but as I seem to do so often when switching computers for this save, I forgot to hit the save button and then I had to replay the Espanyol game. We won 2-0. I thought, you know what? It's pretty much the same result in terms of the goal difference, so we'll just take it. We won by two goals. And then we moved on from there with a 4-0 win against Bilbao. And at this point, I started thinking... This is going to be easy. We're going to absolutely smash this. We're looking amazing. We're barely conceding. And then it all slightly went wrong. I mean, I'm not panicking too much yet. There are a few injuries, a few players out that caused this. But you will see that we lost a game away from home to Elche. Now, that was a poor performance all around. We conceded early on, then scored what seemed to be the equaliser. And I thought we'll take a draw. And then we could give away a penalty in the 94th minute in a game that had 93 minutes added on. And Pastore bagged it. And then we played Atletico Madrid. Obviously, a great team. A Away from home and again they scored a penalty late late on so it's hard to really judge what's been happening too much so far because realistically these could both have been draw games but what I am noticing in these games away from home at least we're struggling to find the back of the net and that might be a problem in this save whilst we haven't got a world-class striker at least in my opinion in this system Gerard Moreno isn't quite working out yet but we will give him time it's just something I need to be aware of going forward so form's okay, not too bad. I think this test against Shakhtar will be a good one because as much as we should go through and beat them in this Champions League group, I'll look at that in a second and show you the other teams. Shakhtar just seems to be one of them banana skin teams that are in every single Champions League group I've ever had. Shakhtar always seems to be around and do some damage at some point. But our group is one I think we could get out of. We are, of course, first seeds because they have won the Europa League last season. So we are considered the best team in this group. I think most people would suggest Dortmund are better, at least in a football manager sense with Erling Haaland in the team, of course. Then we've got Shakhtar and Slavia Prague. I'm hoping will be the punching bags of the group. If we can get some good results against Shakhtar, we should find ourselves in the knockout rounds which is about where I want to be after this first season because we do have a good team and speaking of having a good team we've made some transfers to improve the side the first one is one I've only just finalized nothing too major here he's just going to be an emergency backup a free agent Mark Navarro previously of Espanyol and Watford and Lagans amongst a few others never really played too much football he's been signed as our fourth choice or third choice right wing back Slightly versatile, mainly to play in the under-23s or whatever it is. But you know what? We might see him here and there if someone gets injured. I just thought he's too good of a player to be available on a free. So we have brought him in. But the real signings that you guys will be bothered about start here. We start off with the sales, firstly, of our
our second choice left back. I apologize if I have shown you these before, but I don't believe I have. We have sold Purvis Estupian to Atalanta for about seven and a half million, 6.25 million. There you go. That's the exact value. Um, it, we basically found a better player than him for the similar kind of value. There was a lot of interest in him. He's still pretty young as well, so he's got some time to play. But it looks like it's been a good decision so far after a few poor performances in the Serie A. I mean, it looks like that money is good money for the player that we sold. We definitely could have got more and used this guy, but when you see the player that I've bought in, I think you'll see why we let him go. Same in that right wing back spot. We had Mario Gaspar, who is a player who's been at Villarreal for a long time and it was quite harsh to sell him on. But to be honest, we weren't going to use him all that much. He was our backup right wing back. And again, I found a player who is better suited to that position than Mario Gaspar, a younger player too. So we let him leave for £4.9 million, let's call it five, to Roma. So um, again, it's a bit of a harsh one because he is a uh, Villarreal stalwart, really, but we've let him go. And hopefully you'll look at the players we've bought in and think we've done a decent job here. In terms of incomings, you already know about Goncalo Ignacio, who has been a great signing so far. But we have also signed Alex Grimaldo from Benfica. Bear in mind, Estupian left for six and a half mil to bring in Grimaldo for 10 mil from Benfica, where he's no longer considered a key player anymore. I think it said he was a squad player over there, despite the fact that he's played a lot of games. Benfica were willing to sell he perfectly perfectly suits that wing back spot that we do use and he has done very well for us so far being a Spaniard as well I think he is a great improvement for this Villarreal side and then the replacement for Gaspar is Guilel Rojas I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right at all but he cost us a pretty pricey sum at 12.5 million pounds from second division side Sporting Gijon however I think it's another good pickup he's probably got the quality that Gaspar had he can grow into be a potential leader but he's got a higher ceiling than what Gaspar has at this stage. He's got a lot of room to develop and probably better suits that wingback spot than Gaspar did. However, his first two games for us or one game for us, whatever it was, I don't remember him playing well and that looks about right with a poor average match rating. But that's what we've done so far. We've improved both wingback spots. We've improved the centre-back position, but I still need to improve, in my opinion, the central midfield and the striker position. The transfer window is over. We do have a lot of money to spend still, but I just want to bring in certain quality players as opposed to rejigging every single position with a million players. I think for now, we just focus on improving the positions one by one with players that can actually help the team and not stop gap players that are only going to be here for a year or two. So... That's what we're going with. So far, like I say, the team's not done too bad, but I'm hoping they can do a little bit better. We've got pretty much a full first 11 today. However, unfortunately, Jeremy Pino has been out for a couple of games with injury. And maybe that's why we haven't been winning our most recent games, because without him, we are a completely different side. You can see here, he's been in great form so far. I have something in my eye, so do bear with me two seconds. There we go. I'm sure I won't edit that out. So I think I've covered pretty much everything. With the transfers probably done for a while now until January, we'll likely see two games of video from now on. But I thought I want to get a video out. I've only just got back from holiday the other day. It was great. Thank you for asking. It was awesome. But yes, here we are ready to potentially win our first Champions League game or see where we might have a big problem in the squad. The team we're going for is this. Ruli in goal with Juan Foyf, Ignacio and Pau Torres at the back. Aurier and Grimaldo play in wing backs with Parejo and Coquelin in the central midfield roles. Then Chiquese comes in for Pino with Danjuma and Gerard Moreno finishing off the rest of the team. If I'm talking about where I want to improve, you guys do let me know what you think, but I'm thinking wing back spots for now we can keep the way they are. Centre backs I'd probably say are at a decent level right now but next season Albiol will likely move on and will need a better player in that centre back spot particularly maybe in that one fourth position. You know what someone did actually I saw a comment on holiday saying that I should try and give Pau Torres a new contract because he has a release clause and he definitely does and that is a release clause I consider far too low so whilst there's no interest in him you guys will see me do it let's try and give him a new deal um, I'm gonna get rid of that but I will consider him a star player he's probably the best player in the side by a long distance he's gonna be a big player for us let's make sure we give him the contract he deserves now I want to add a release clause in here because in the Spanish league you have to have a release clause I want to have one where I never even have to consider it an option so I've been trying to put as many players to 500 million as possible that usually means accepting their wage demands a little bit more so if we go up to that 83 that he asked for originally and try and get it to 500 mil, see what he says. There we go. So we might have to pay him a grand extra a week, but it means we never have to worry about uh, renegotiating or losing him due to a release clause issue. So if that's sorted, I think that's a good bit of business. Pau Torres now loses his release clause. 
it's good if I remember that while I was doing that. So thank you to the person who mentioned that in the comments. That has really helped us out there. But uh, back to where I think we can improve the team. I've mentioned striker. Wings, I think we're okay for now. Danjuma is a good player. Pino is a delightful player who's going to be a star for us. Maybe Jared Moreno will eventually move onto the wings as we find better players for that forward position. But right now, Obviously, this tactic does use a complete forward, which is a very specialised role. Gerard Moreno just hasn't done well enough for us. You can see there, that's really poor from four games started as well. However, Boulay Dia, who is someone that I wouldn't have considered very good in that role, has done very well. So maybe he's going to be our starting striker for this game, you know? Why don't we give him a run out? Don't tell me he's injured. He's going to be... Right, he's bloody injured. So that's no help. But yeah, I think striker, centre mid with a couple of ageing players and some players that we could make some money off of. I'll try and keep Parejo. They're the areas I'll need to identify going forward. So if you have any scouting recommendations, do let me know in the comments. But let's pick our side here. And they're suggesting no Aurier and no Albiol. Uh, Ignacio, should I say? Let's have a look. Why is that? Aurier, fully fit. Has played better recently than Rosas. So let's just keep... Uh, yeah, let's keep Aurier. And then Ignacio, I'm going to play. I think, I think we've got this. Come on, boys. Let's see what we can do in this match against Shakhtar. Okay, right. We're off here in the game. And Shakhtar, as much as I'd like to think... We could steamroll them. I've got to remember that Villarreal, as much as they've been doing well in the UCL in real life, getting all the way to the semis, maybe they're not really the kind of club who we consider to walk into Shakhtar and beat them because they are one of the more dominant clubs in Ukraine. They seem to always be a banana skin in the Champions League for me. And there we go. It's a tough place to go away from home to play Shakhtar. But after conceding two late penalties in recent games, we concede from another set piece. It's a free kick. Mykon curls it in into that top right corner. It's actually a pretty good goal, to be honest. It's um, a good position to have a free kick and a good finish from him from there. But looking at this uh, team from Shakhtar, I feel like half of them are Brazilian. Maybe I'm wrong, but it feels like near enough all of them are. Um, and after 28 minutes, we are playing terribly. We've had all the, having all the ball, should I say, and creating no chances, which seems to be the way that we're playing football at the minute. I don't have a clue what's happening there because the ball sailed out of play. And even though it was going absolutely nowhere near anybody on the shape of the earth, it looks like we've given away a penalty, which would be really annoying. Um, and it has been awarded, right? Fantastic. What a great start to the game. Conceding the free kick, is it going to be our third penalty goal conceded in a row? Ishmaeli steps up. It's in, right? Fantastic. We can just bin this Champions League game already. 2-0 down. For God's sake, I didn't even see what we gave away the penalty for, but the ball was flying out of place. So I have no clue why anybody there has made a foul. It's actually really annoying because um, we are having all the ball, creating no chances, and then Shakhtar have had two shots, a penalty, a free kick, and they've both gone in. Ugh, we're going into half time with absolutely nothing, and we've basically seen two highlights, and it's just ended up in the back of our net. This is terrible from us, and it goes to show how we've been playing recently in those last couple of games we need to pick up some form. I understand with a few injuries and the lack of squad depth, it means that we're not playing too well because Moreno's playing half fit. And even though he hasn't been playing too well anyway, that's not going to be helping him. But I have no choice because Dyer is injured and we have no one else to play outside of that. This is not going to be easy, guys, winning the Champions League with Villarreal. We've got a long way to go. We just need a few improvements in a few positions. And I really do think we could compete. But right now, it's not working. We've also got to admit the fact that it's going to take time uh, to get this tactic down. We can't be too reactionary, but so far we'll have played five games, one, two, lost three. The board is not going to be all that happy with me. And actually, one, three, lost three, because we did win the Super Cup as well. But this is not great. It really isn't. We need to make some changes here. I don't know what we've got on the bench that could actually help us out at all. We're in one of them positions where we don't really have bench players who can really make a difference. And I'm fully expecting this game just to glide away now with nothing happening. But I'm going to change the wing backs just because... It is an important position and neither of them are playing great. Pau Torres is the only standing, shining light, should I say. It's a good job we gave him a new deal. Ignacio, tired. There's no point killing him in a game where we might not even win. So he's going to come off. Um, let's switch Parejo and Coquelin and get La Celso on because in theory, he might be more of an attacking threat, but maybe not. Um, Parejo's playing well. Everyone else could easily go off the pitch, but we have no replacements for any of them. So I guess they stay. And we still have one sub, so, you know, we'll hold that out for a little bit later. But I don't see this going anywhere other than a loss here. And it might even just be another goal for Shakhtar because they're at least creating chances. We're having 60% possession and having one shot on target. It's awful from us. Who knows? If we score a goal here, we might have a bit of hope. But it looks like it's going to be another Shakhtar goal with Tete being played through. 
taking it around our players far too easy. Here's Traore. We do win it back, but we just blast it straight back towards a Shakhtar back line. I think I'm going to need to analyse a few things here after this game to figure out what we're going wrong, what's going wrong, should I say, and how we can improve it. Oof, okay, right, it's gone wide. But saying that, we're having all the ball. We've conceded from pretty much set pieces solely in the last few games. We just can't finish our chances, or at least create chances. So it's got to be a tactical issue, because we've got players here who could do the job. Parejo scores. That's what we like to see. Danny Parejo with a free kick, forces our former goalkeeper, Asenio, into forcing the ball into the back of his net. It's not great, but we'll take it because it's, it, I mean, it is great for him to score, but it's a dodgy time to score now because we're not going to get another chance really. It's the first time we've seen us have a shot and it was from a free kick. If we somehow scrape a draw out here, it's, it's completely unbelievable. The ball goes in. If we win this back encounter, maybe, but it looks like it will just be another Shakhtar chance. Who knows though? Marcus Antonio, they're playing it through quite nicely. I'm still playing it backwards though. There's a chance we could nick the ball. Amral Albiol does that, but then gives it straight back to Antonio, which makes me think this will be a Shakhtar highlight now. Here's Dodo, who is a very good player and will likely move on to Manchester United if any of my other saves are anything to go by. It's a glancing header from Traore just over the bar and that'll be that for this game. Or maybe not. Maybe there's one more highlight in this match still. Let's see how it goes. Is it going to be, it's just a free kick? So right, it's just showing me the highlight to finish off the game. We're not actually getting anything. But 2-1, it's a poor result, let's be honest. But away to Shakhtar, I suppose you can expect to potentially lose or potentially draw. It just doesn't, it, it will be fine really. It's just that we haven't won our last couple. And now we're just looking like a team that's just completely ineffective going forward. And it makes me wonder, are we only good when we've got the main players on the pitch? Like... Pino, top level. Moreno, when fully fit, could maybe do a job. But as you've seen in this game, it's another terrible average match rating from him. Dyer would be my starting striker if he was fit instead of Moreno. Maybe doing a complete forward's too much to ask. I don't know. But like the defence has actually played really well. Pau Torres, Juan Foyf, Albiol, um, Ignacio. They've got good ratings. The wing backs aren't contributing enough. The central midfielders are playing fine. But then it seems to be when we get to those forward positions, nothing's happening. And maybe that's an issue with a tactic. I'd suggest it probably is. There's a little bit of hope in the fact that Dortmund didn't win there against Prague. So we can kind of say, yes, we are bottom, but no one's not catchable at this point. And of course they wouldn't be after one game, but you'd have expected Dortmund to get three points there. So the fact that Prague have taken some points off a team you'd probably consider to go through, I'll take that. But what is our schedule looking like? We need some home games to build up some form. So away from home against Cadiz, then we've got a home match against Mallorca, then Vigo, then Prague, then Levante. Now, this might be bold from me, but I think if we can sort things out, we can win every single one of these games in a row. And if we do that and get all those wins on a bounce, we look good, it builds the morale, it builds the momentum, and then going into these big games against uh, Barcelona, uh, Betis, Vallecano, Dortmund, maybe we can get some points out there, but we need to have a very good September. But I believe we can do it with the squad we've got. We just need... Players to come back to full fitness, enough rotation. I wish a transfer window was still open to bring players in because we have got a lot of money. But when I when I went into this, I thought, you know what? We've got a good enough team here. I'm not going to waste my money on absolute dross and buy terrible players. But now I'm thinking that maybe we should have done. It could have been nice to have a bit more squad depth. We're going to have to have a look. Let me know if you know anyone that we could sign to be that complete forward position. I know I could get Luca and I know I could get Piccoli, but I don't want to go for the same players that I always buy. So I'm ruling them two out for now. Unless a really, really good deal comes up, I'm ruling those two out. Chiquese, I, I, you know, I'd, I'd let him go. It's only for loan. But I'd let any of these players go, really, to bring in some better replacements. No one is safe, other than maybe Pino, Pau Torres, and Ignacio. Maybe Grimaldo as well. No one in this team is a guaranteed starter for me. Um, Parejo's done well, to be honest. I'll give him some credit. I think I'm just ranting now, but we need to be a lot better. Hopefully, I'll have some better news to report when you next see us. But at least we can say... The positives, we've made some decent seeming signings at least, and we've got Pau Torres a new contract, and we saw a good Parejo free kick goal. The negatives, we've lost three on the bounce, all from penalty, penalty, penalty free kick. We've got to do something tactically to create more chances because conceding isn't actually an issue. We're just getting unlucky from certain decisions. But yes, uh, we need improvement. Let's see how we go in the next episode. Thank you all for watching. If you have enjoyed, don't forget to smash the like button. Thank you for all the support on the series. I really do mean it. Onwards and upwards for the channel. Onwards and upwards, hopefully, for Villarreal. But we'll find that out in the next episode. So I'll see you later, guys. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>